Recently I found some pine bed slats and a broken double bed frame and in this video I'm going to be making some bunk beds for cats or small dogs. I previously designed and made some single versions of these beds which was an earlier video on my channel. The slats had some straps attached with staples so the first job was to get those off and remove all the staples. I also removed all the metal fixtures and fittings. The slats measured just shy of 1.4 meters in length and from that I decided what size to make the beds. I'd make the length 60 centimeters so I could get two pieces out of each slat and the width 44 centimeters which would give me three pieces from each slat. I cut the pieces to length using a stop block at the mitre station to get consistent cuts and I'd worked out that I had enough slats to make two of these bunk beds. I kept all of the short off cuts to one side as I could make use of them for the leg assembly later on. Using these pieces I assembled some rectangles using wood glue and brad nails and a speed square to ensure that the corners were square. These rectangles will later hold the mattresses. Next I started making the cut for the leg assemblies and these would be around 70 centimeters in length which would be the height of the bed. Each leg would be made up of two layers of slats, a long piece on the outside and several short pieces on the inside. And here I'm offering them up to work out where I needed to apply glue. These legs would form the headboard end of the bunk beds. At the bottom of the leg there'd be a small offcut, and then there'd be a space for the width of a slat, which the rectangles will slot into later, and I'm using the spacer to get the right size. Then there'd be a longer piece to separate the two bunks, and then the second rectangle piece. And above that would be a headboard which I'll add later on. These nails are really just to stop things moving around, and the glue joints won't be particularly tight without something squeezing them together, so then I added some clamps. Then I started making the cuts for the legs at the foot of the beds. At the start of this project I figured out that I could get two bunk beds out of the pine bed slats that I had. However, I must have miscalculated because I've now run out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece off the headboard frame and I can use that to make the remaining parts that I need. In order to get this piece off, I need to cut through it, but I can see that there is a metal screw underneath there, so I don't want to cut through that. And unusually, I can see that underneath here, there's a plug, so I'm guessing that's where the screw head is. And the screw is going in this direction. So what I'm going to do is make a cut about here, and then I should be good. I used my oscillating tool to cut the piece free and then squared up those cuts on the mitre saw before cutting the leg pieces to length. Before I can glue up the leg assembly for the foot of the bed, I'll need to remove the finish from this piece of wood that came from the headboard, otherwise the glue isn't going to stick properly. I used a card scraper to remove the finish, and then I could glue up the assembly for the legs at the foot of the bed in the same way as I had for the head of the bed. I clamped those up too, this time making use of my vise. The next job was to rip the edges of all of the legs clean at the table saw, to remove the rounded edges on all of the slats. If you're wondering why there's so much dust here, it's because I pulled the extraction hose off the table saw earlier and forgot to reconnect it. So the dust extraction is turned on, but it's not connected to the saw, and it took me a while to realize. I could now add the rectangles to the leg assemblies and nail them in place, and this is when the bunk beds started really coming together. I added some wood filler to the nail holes. This is actually oak filler, but it's not a bad colour match to the pine. You can see that the holes almost disappear. I had this scrap of block board, and I'd use this to make some cleats to support the mattresses in each of the rectangles. So I ripped some pieces to 20mm square on the table saw. I glued and nailed them in place, drilled some pilot holes, and added screws for extra strength. 
For the bottom of each mattress, I had some veneered particle board which I salvaged from an old wardrobe that was left by some bins. So I ripped these to size so that they would fit inside the rectangles and be supported by the cleats. This piece of pine here was one of the sides of the double bed frame, and after measuring the length I found it was long enough for me to make the head and footboards for both of the beds. First I needed to remove the cleats. These were screwed and unfortunately they were also glued, so I used a hammer and screwdriver to pry them off. Some pieces came off quite cleanly, but in some areas the wood split and left a bit of a mess. I then roughly marked up the pieces for length and cut them slightly oversized with a circular saw because the workpiece was too long to fit on my mitre station. I could then clean up those rough circular saw cuts at the mitre station, set up a stop block and cut all the head and footboards to length. Next I could clean them up with a hand plane. There was some tear out on a couple of these pieces, but I worked out that I could face the torn out faces at the footboard end of the bed on the inside so they would be hidden. When I offered up the head and footboards, I decided to add a subtle curve for decoration. So I marked up where I wanted the curve to start on the sides, and then marked up a curve by hand. I cut that out on the bandsaw following the line, and then I could use the offcut as a template to mark up the opposite side and cut that too. I used a block plane to clean up those bandsaw cuts and also to refine the curve. Then the headboards got glued and clamped on. I cut the same curves onto the footboards too, and I could then glue those pieces to the rectangles with the torn out faces facing inwards as I mentioned earlier. I secured the footboards with screws from the inside as these won't be visible and it was quicker than clamping. Time to upholster the beds now and for that I'm going to use some of this two inch thick foam. I bought this on a market stall in Norwich where I live and the lovely man on the market stall cut this to the size that I needed so nothing more for me to do with that. And for the fabric, I'm going to use an old pair of curtains which I found in a charity shop. If you go to a charity shop somewhere like Oxfam, they'll often have a rail full of old material, blankets and curtains. And with curtain fabric, you usually get something that's nice and good quality and hard wearing. And I think this blue striped pattern will look pretty cool. And for the second bed, I've got another pair of curtains. These ones are cream. Nice fabric again, and on the inside, there's actually a cotton backing. So I'm going to rip off that cotton backing, rip it up into pieces, and they'll come in useful as shop rags. I ripped off the top part of the curtains, which won't be needed, and then I could start upholstering. I placed the foam onto the fabric in one corner and added the backing board. Using my air stapler, I first secured one of the short sides in the middle, and then I could make a cut with the scissors and rip the fabric to size. Then I pulled the opposite side as tight as possible and secured it with staples in the middle too. Next I repeated that again, but this time on the long sides. Then I worked on the corners, pulling them tight, firing in a couple of staples, and then folding the sides in as tightly as possible. The more upholstering I do, the better I get at it. I'm still not great at it, but here's how they looked when they were done. Next I sanded the bed frames with my random orbit sander at 120 grit. I decided to finish one of the beds with boiled linseed oil, which brings the grain out really nicely and adds a warmer tone to the colour of the wood. The second bed I finished with some rustic pine brie wax, and this adds more of a brown colouring to the wood and brings out the grain a bit too. After a few hours I could then buff out the wax and that was the beds done, so I could add the mattresses.
I took some photos of the beds and tried to get my cat Dylan to act as a model, but he wasn't really in the mood for it as you can probably tell in the photos. These bunk beds are available to buy on my Etsy store. This project took around 7 hours to complete and I spent around £20 for the foam and the fabric. Thank you for watching.